We are the friends that refuse to let you settle anywhere. We want you to take whatever expectations you have for your business and your life and expand them further than you've allowed yourself to before. We're talking style, connection, purpose, and securing all the bags. You can sit with us, but we're going to have you step your game up too. I'm Robert. I'm Rachel. And I'm Susan. Welcome Welcome to to the the most. Welcome to the most podcast, where you're about to learn how to be the most version of yourself. I'm Susan Hyatt. I'm Rachel Rogers. I'm Robert Hartwell. You better get ready, because guess what we're doing? We're about to spill the (laughs) highs and lows of 2022. I know y'all nosy and you want to (laughs) know. You know they nosy. They're like, "Uh, let me get up in your business. (laughs) (laughs) They've been waiting for this. And so, listen, I think it's important, and we have been talking about this off camera, super important for us to share authentically what goes on behind a multi-seven figure, eight figure business. Mm -hmm. And so, get out your notebooks. Because you're going to want to learn from the mistakes that we've made and also get inspired by the things that went really well for us. Yes. There's always both. There's always both. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think we can all collectively agree that last year was wild. Yes. Um, But what I will say is thank God for friends, Mm -hmm. you know? And also for all of you who are watching and listening right now, because our first season of The Most, we just dedicated ourselves to having fun. Yes. You know? And the messages that you all sent back to us, whether you DM'd us or came to The Most in LA, it was just like, it filled us with so much life. Yes. You know? That definitely helped some of the mistakes that we made last year. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, it just really gave us life. And so I'm excited to to dive into this. How about you? Yes. I agree that 2022 was wild, but like wildly successful, wildly mm-hmm. challenging, all of those things. Yeah. And I know for my company, we grew, you know, a lot um, in 2021. And then in 2022, it was like, we grew so much, it's almost like the foundation was too small for how big this building had got. Mm-hmm. And so we had to reset the foundation, which is not a fun thing necessarily. But I do think that that's one of the things is we do commit to having fun and enjoying life. Like one of the things that I do every day is if I have a bad day, I'm like, okay, let me look at my calendar. What happened today? Why was it a bad day? And then I'm trying to make sure it doesn't happen again. So I'm always trying to make sure, because the days of our lives are like, that's our living, right? This is not a dress rehearsal. Mm -hmm. So you got to enjoy it no matter what. Even when it is challenging, you got to just say like, okay, how can I make this fun? And how can I accept the challenge and be up for the challenge Mm -hmm. and be excited about what's on the other side of this Mm -hmm. challenging moment that I'm having? Yeah. Correct. And I love what you're saying about And I know we'll get into this a little later on in this episode, but going back in and really re-examining the foundation. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's something that we talk about a lot in the entrepreneurial world. It feels like grow your business to like get out. But like you're saying, no, no, no. (laughs) Seven figures to eight figures. Like there's a whole new foundation Mm -hmm. that has to be built. So I'm really excited to learn from you today and hear all of this i mean for me 2022 was a burn it down year you know like it was a burn it down year that's like, one of my favorite things to yeah. do let's light a match and burn that sucker down but i've always watched y'all burning things down and i was like it's a habit yeah i'm like why would anyone do a thing and then i was like fuck this shit yeah. it's like, just like dracaris right like Breathe dragon fire on all of this thing. Because things have a time, right? They do. They have a timeline. And like, Mm -hmm. you know, it'll be, by the time this comes out, my 16-year anniversary in this business. Amazing. 21 years as an entrepreneur. And there have been many, many moments over the years where you... You reach a point, you reach a tipping point, and yeah. it, and 2022 was a burn it down year for me as well, just mm-hmm. programs within my business. But you reach a moment where you look around and things just aren't working for you anymore. Yeah. Mm. And um, I think that it's actually normal in business and people don't really talk about it. 
Um, it's not a failure in business. As a matter of fact, I think it takes so much courage, one hundred percent, right, to be willing to look at a multi-million yes. dollar program company yeah. like you did and like I did, and say, you know what, this is no longer working for me. Whether it's like the foundation for your business, mm -hmm. or you have grown in a way where it's not as fulfilling for you. Yes, I think that's what's important because I was, you know, realizing in. Um, the earlier part of 2022 mm -hmm. that there were a couple of mastermind programs and a structure of my business that was um, on the surface doing really well but behind the scenes i was like why am i why am i working this hard Correct. to to uh fulfill a uh business structure mm -hmm. that i really woke up and was like i don't even like this structure mm -hmm. i don't even like this anymore mm -hmm. so how can i be in my integrity and honor what is most important, I think, for my work in the world and change things. Yes, yes. exactly. I think what I love about this is everyone that's listening and watching right now, it's because they've got something in their gut right now that they know they're ready to act on. Yes. That there's some change. And I'm hoping that by listening to our stories of literally burning businesses, burning programs down, literally rebuilding entire foundations in your business that one, it normalizes that the work never ends. Mm -hmm. And first and foremost, choose you. Yes. Like choose you. Mm -hmm. I'm proud. <laughs> yes. And I think it's true. You outgrow, you can outgrow things. You can build something and then outgrow that thing that you've built. Um, and then you're ready for a new version. And I think you start to come up against the ceiling and the walls of something that you built. And you're like, I am ready for more. And you have to be willing to say yes for yourself. Yes. I'm realizing and listening to y'all talk, I think the thing that I actually burnt down was like the old version of myself. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Right? Like the version of myself that was like very nice, very accommodating, very, you know, serve everybody but not getting served myself. Like I realized like, oh, to, in order to run an eight figure business, you actually have to hold people accountable. Mm -hmm. um, you have to hold yourself accountable. You have to have lots of hard conversations. Yeah. It is like nonstop, constant, hard, honest conversations with team members, with business partners, like everything. Uh, because you start to realize like, oh, the only way this is going to grow is if we're willing to do these things and we're willing to show up this way. And I think you also have to take ownership of the company that you want to build. Like there is a mission that we are on that is more important than any one person on my team, including me. Mm -hmm. Right. There yeah. is a culture that we that I want to build within my company that is a top priority for me. And if somebody who like maybe there's an old version of our culture that used to be what we were. And then we changed, yeah. we grew, we evolved, yeah. right? We're serving larger groups of people. How do we have to step up? Like one of the ways that I can think of is just learning how to grow and lead a very diverse community that you wanna be inclusive and you wanna center everybody's identity, not just a white male cis identity, like in almost all of the world, right? right? And so how do you do that? Nobody teaches you how to do that. You have to wrestle with it, you have to figure it out. And once you figure it out, you have to set standards and you have to be a leader and you have to say, this is acceptable and this is not. Yeah. And this is how we behave in this space. If you don't like it, then you cannot be in this space, period, end of story. Mm -hmm. Because you're here to protect everybody, not just the one individual, but all the individuals together. Yes. And so like being a leader is not necessarily the most popular thing, yeah. right? Like sometimes people don't Ooh. see all of the behind the scenes of the decisions that you're making. And you can't share things that are private, people's personal, you can't out everybody in the journey, yeah. right? And sometimes people, you get really misunderstood as a leader. Yeah. And one of the things that <laughs> happened to me that I actually think was the best thing that happened to me in 2022 was being okay with it. And I remember my mastermind clients asking like, hey, like these people are talking about you and they're saying this online and like, why aren't you correcting it? And I'm like, because I'm just letting them be wrong about me. Mm -hmm. I don't feel the need to correct it. Mm -hmm. Like I show up as this person every day in every aspect of my life, at home, at work, with every person that I interact with. And if you don't believe the true version of me, I accept that. And I'm not here to change your mind or convince you otherwise. Believe what you wanna believe and I'm gonna to continue to be me and show up the way that I show up and show up in integrity, right? And aligned with my values, period, end of story. And I think that is the ultimate freedom. Yes. And sometimes you have to go through hard things to get there to be like, oh, I honestly, 
And it's not even like, I don't know, because you know how sometimes we just say, I don't care, behold this field of fucks that I don't care, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> See that it is barren, right? But it's not just that, it's like, it's kind of like, I don't, I just release it. It's not that I don't care, it's yeah. that I don't, I just, I don't try to control it. I let go of trying to control what the world thinks of me. Yes. And that is an ultimate freedom. Yeah. And I think you, you, what the more people that know who you are, the bigger the audience that you are in front of, the more you're writing books and stating your opinion about the world publicly, the more people are going to have opinions. And the sooner you can let that go and not try to control what everybody thinks, the freer you are going to be and the happier you're going to be. A hundred percent. And I, similarly, I've had people tag me in threads where people had all sorts of opinions about me. Yes. And, and they were like, you know, just up in arms on my behalf. Yes. And I'm like, you know what? I am not even dipping my toe in. <laughs> exactly. Like I don't have time. Yes. Right to correct when you're running these kinds of businesses. Yes. You don't have time to run all over the internet and try to set everybody straight. Because guess what? They don't want to know the truth. <laughs> exactly. They don't. They don't want to actually understand who you are or why you've made the decisions that yeah. you've made. And and also people who who create false narratives. Um, it's like, if that's what you want to believe, like, go have it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be over it. here, right? I'm going to shine my sunlight mm -hmm. over here. I'm telling you, I will never forget. I was on vacation. I don't even remember where. I was on vacation somewhere um, with my family, and, like, people were tagging me in something, like, some whole video, like, a whole, apparently a whole Facebook group was created to hate on me, y'all. You could join the Hate Rachel Rogers fan club. Please enjoy. Okay? <laughs> but apparently, so, like, people were telling me about this, and I'm like, I am over here, like, scuba dive, not scuba dive, snorkeling with my child. I do not care. Yeah. Like, I am over here snorkeling with my son, and we're having the best time. We're having quality time. And I just, I think when you... It's like the more opportunity comes your way, the more clear you are on what your priorities are and the more you can kind of start to block out the noise and the things that really cannot be priority. And I'm not saying like everybody's opinion about me maybe isn't wrong. Like they just, that's just their opinion or they just don't like how I do it or what I do. And then I'm good with that. Okay, Yeah. cool. You crying over I'm here? I'm crying because, <laughs> oh no, I'm crying because these conversations used to, kill us yes oh Two my god it's ago. so true now you our box thread was like no i'm serious like we would be so upset be so upset when it's someone true. would be wrong about us yes and like it's happened to all three of us just blatant lies mm -hmm. about our character about our actions about how we run our businesses and you saying it's okay for you to be wrong about me it just hit me because they're is something that I've been processing for years about someone being wrong about me. Yes. And I remember it's probably two or three weeks ago, it was after ROI, mm. and that thought pattern came in my head, and it was the first time in my life that I heard, you're free. Mm. You know? And yes. it was like just this release. Yes. And I'm just so grateful that we're all in this place where it's like, the mission becomes greater yes. than your thoughts about me. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and my sleep and my peace and my joy and my friends and my family, that's what matters. Yes. You know, and exactly. When we were at ROI, I think that was one of the biggest things that I saw was the word that I took was the audacity. Mm hmm to stand in your truth. Yes. All of those women, all of those people, regardless of their gender, their color, mm -hmm. all of them have people talking shit about them online. <laughs> so you true. know what I mean? But all of or them, at home. Or at home. You, you know? know? But all of them are up there. Oh, yeah. Don't even talk about my local community. <laughs> Hi. You know? Just, They're not watching. Yeah. <laughs> just up there and living, living their life. Yes. You know? And I... I'm just, I, I'm emotional because I'm realizing, oh, wow, we've, like, hit a new space in our friendship mm -hmm. that, like, we don't circulate conversation over that anymore. Mm -hmm. Truly. It's just, like... We're like, oh, is that what's happening? Cool. Yeah. Okay, so when are we going to Italy next? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's the uh, next retreat? Yeah, exactly. What else are we working on? It's so true. Thank you. Aww. Uh, 
Well, I mean, all of that being said, um, we should probably, uh, we've talked about some of the lows, but we should probably wrap the lows and get to the highs. Yes. Well, um, yes, I mean, lows are like, you know, people saying things or whatever and, and learning how to get free of that. I think also recognizing that everybody can't come with you where you're going. Mm -hmm. I think that was definitely part of my 2022 where like yeah. people who had helped me build my business. And and this is not the first time it's happened. I mean, I've been in business for 12 years now and it's happened more than once where somebody on your team or somebody that is, you know, a part of your world, a part of your, you know, um, business community or ecosystem and that has helped you get to where you are now, sometimes they can't come with you, right? Like you might outgrow them, they might outgrow you, yeah. or for whatever reason, you no longer feel aligned and it's time to bless and release, right? And Be and, blessed. <laughs> be blessed. <laughs> That's a trigger word. But, <laughs> but you can never, you know, sometimes, and sometimes it doesn't go well, right? Like sometimes people are very angry, you know, like sometimes you're just naming the thing that both of you are feeling because you're feeling unaligned. And so there's constant, constant friction. And sometimes that's something you can work through and get to the other side. And sometimes it isn't for whatever reason. And when you have those hard conversations, sometimes people take it hard and they're very angry or they feel rejected, right? Mm -hmm. In some way. And so, you know, that's just part of it. And if you are committed to your mission, if you're committed to your assignment on earth, like I'm following my assignment and I'm clear on that. Okay. And I think we all need to be following our assignment. Yeah. And and also you realize like in order for me to follow this assignment, I can't do this anymore. I can't behave in this way anymore. I can't tolerate this anymore. Right? Like, and so you have to learn to let go of some things that are no longer serving you in order to keep following that assignment and yeah. stay on mission. And I think when you do that, sometimes people get angry and you have to just let that go. Yeah. Right. And so I think that's one of the hardest things to do along the journey is like this person that you might love and connect with and are friends with and all the things, but you know, you can't get your business to that next level. You can't take your assignment to the next level if you can t keep dealing with that same thing. Mm -hmm. And not everybody wants to go with you. Some people right. are like, I'm content right here. Yeah. I've even had people say to me like, I liked the business where it was. I don't want it to grow anymore. And I'm like, okay, well, my whole goal is to make it grow. That is my assignment is to make right. it grow. So I can't, I can't keep it small because you're more comfortable here. Yeah, right. We have to be willing to get uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and I think when you do that and you bless and release, you also find your people, right? You also find your people who are like, I'm here for the journey. I'm here for the mission. I'm, I'm willing to get uncomfortable. Let's go fight this fight together. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's, it's a challenging thing, but it's also a beautiful thing because when you create those gaps, it's like somebody comes along to fill it that is like where you both feel aligned and it doesn't feel hard every day it feels delightful yeah yes. you know and fun like when we get on team meetings now and i look at my team like this beautiful super diverse team and everybody's bringing their different ideas and their different genius and their different talents and skills and it's just beautiful like i think one of the things that i was telling y'all is that at roi people talked about what a love fest it was and for y'all who don't know roi the millionaire summit was a big conference that we put on in january um which was amazing and people were talking about what a love fest it was and i was on a team huddle this week literally was it yesterday and i'm like every day at hello seven is a love fest like this is what we do and so internally for each of our team members it feels like a love fest and so that then becomes an outpouring where you join one of our calls or you come to one of our events and you're going to experience that because literally that's who we are as a company right mm -hmm. um and that's such a beautiful thing but we couldn't have got here if i wasn't willing to have those hard conversations mm -hmm. and release relationships that were no longer yeah. serving us right like we did not have this company culture at the beginning of 2022 and i had to recognize that and say this is no longer acceptable. These are the things that we have to change. And the people who didn't want to come along with, they didn't come. Right. And we have to accept that that's part of the journey and that's how we get to be here. Mm -hmm. So if you're not willing to make those hard decisions and have those hard conversations, like you don't get to the beauty of the other side. Right. Ooh. Right. Yep. And I would say mm -hmm. it's similarly, some of my lows were similar. Like I took a look around and realized that the team that I had in place to operate two of these masterminds that no longer serve me, if I wanted to, which ended up being a high, if I wanted to get back to my core of what's important to me, yes. which is- And I also think you the, you doing your best work in the world, right? Yes. Where you feel like, 
I am changing the world and it's just transformation everywhere. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. like like one of the things I'm most proud of came out of that, which yeah. is like, okay, if I don't want to be doing it in this way, what do I want to be doing? Mm-hmm. And which is what I teach, which is fun and pleasure and life of yes. And like, okay, if this is the structure I want to have, is if this is my assignment, if this is yes. the mission I'm on and it doesn't look like this, then changes had to be made. And that was really hard, difficult conversations yes. to say like, this is what I'm building and it is going to require you not coming along. Yes. And people that I love and care for and that have done great work and, um, you know, my mission I feel like I have lost the plot. Yes. You know? I know exactly what you mean. Yes. Yes. And and so I was like, oh my gosh. And then deciding, okay, if it's going to be a yes community, if it's going to be based on fun and pleasure, and it's going to look like this, me doing more retreats and me doing the things that set me on fire internally, it's going to look really different. And that, and that involves... Um, a lot of vulnerability Mm -hmm. and a lot of difficult decisions and a lot of uh, reimagining and dreaming in the midst of like all this revenue leaving. (laughs) 100%. Right? In the midst of of being like, okay, here's, you know, millions of dollars I'm looking at in the face. Goodbye. Yes. And I'm going to stand here in this really scary place and say, who wants to come along with me on this other thing? But this is the question that I have for y'all. Do you want the life coach who tells you live a life of yes and tells you to walk away from jobs and all kinds of things that are no longer serving you and then never is willing to do that themselves? Like, who who wants to work with that person, right? 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 And that's one of the things I love about you. Like, this life of yes, y'all, she truly lives it every day. Yeah. We're always like, we need, rub off on me. Help me get up <laughs> Give me earlier. Some of that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she is like, I have never met a person more committed to their joy and pleasure and living their best life every day, no matter what is going on. And I do mean no matter what. Okay? Listen. Like the I have seen you on heavy days with heavy news that most people couldn't get out of bed. And she is out here going for a run and taking care of herself. <laughs> And prioritizing her joy. <laughs> nope, nope. Take it, take it, take it off. You gonna take it today? So, and that's what it means to live in integrity and build a business in integrity, right? It's like we actually practice the things that we preach, y'all. Um, and this woman definitely does that. So, I think that I, I, I love to see it, and I think that when our people, the people who are meant to work with you, are more attracted to you, with the more you live into your true assignment and live in your integrity. The more the people who know you and who know you are the right person for them are attracted to your work. I agree with all that. Quit making me cry. <laughs> uh, but but, but for, for sure, you know, it, it um, you know, running a business like this involves tears. Yes. It involves hard conversations. 100%. It, it involves being like, oh, okay, you're mad now? Uh, okay. <laughs> I get it. And yes. I also am not, I, refuse to sacrifice my joy and my yes and my mental health for something that is not not what i want to be doing exactly well well that was that was that year that we had very similar years yes you know the burn it the burn it down like i definitely think for me the biggest low was closing Broadway Collective, Mm -hmm. you know, which was the both of you are very pivotal to me becoming an entrepreneur, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, I remember when I first started Broadway Collective in 2016, uh, Rachel was my first coach Mm -hmm. and my attorney, like you were my (laughs) lawyer, you were drafting all the contracts and all of the things. And I remember I had this limiting belief, which I didn't know was a limiting belief at the time, that if I am not performing on Broadway eight shows a week, how would any parent trust me to allow their student to train with me and Mm -hmm. our company? And I was at Susan's 10th anniversary. That's right. My tea party. Yes, the tea party. That was so fun. It was so gorgeous. And at that tea party. I remember we all wound up in jewel tones. Yes. yes. <laughs> we ended up yeah. matching just yeah. accidentally. Yes. Yeah. Um, but that 
party was the moment that I said, okay, I'm putting my notice in. I was doing Hello, Dolly! at the time on Broadway. Yes. And that's when I left my career on Broadway and fully went into entrepreneurship. And so 2022 was the year where I was looking at that business and realizing I was really disenchanted with Broadway. Mm -hmm. Like, it's my seven-year-old dream. And I made it happen. And, and you could, did that dream. I did that damn thing. Yeah, yeah you did. And it was amazing. However, I was done. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's hard to look at families. I mean, any time that a family would say yes to us on Broadway Collective, they would stay three, four years. Yeah, you know, like we did not have turnover in our company. And so in 2022, when I'm filming my TV show and doing a multi-million dollar renovation on my home, I decide to burn that thing down and to close it down. And what I didn't really, I, I was following my gut. Yes. And I was following like truly what you all preach, which is go after the thing that you crave. What is the thing that you really desire? Yes. And you all are really the reason that I felt the courage to build the new company and walk away from Broadway Collective. And you're right, there are going to be tears mm -hmm. and the shit is going to be hard. <laughs> 100%. And because in burning down Broadway Collective, that was a multi-million dollar company, which had a million dollar membership of recurring revenue every <laughs> single week. So when you say People are like, that, you did what now? Yeah. <laughs> Why are you renovating? <laughs> pandemic is still swirling you you're like you know Jesus? you need new windows you know windows cost money correct floors cost money, money y'all <laughs> you know? and so i think that was the that was definitely the low of like saying goodbye to 22 employees mm -hmm. and saying wow i am gonna go from a team of 22 to five wow you know and then foundationally that's scary because there are so many tasks that I had not done as an entrepreneur in years mm -hmm. and I was like wait you I get can't... real rusty like yeah. how do you write an email yeah. again? <laughs> how do you build this funnel <laughs> how, how does this work <laughs> you better look real quick yeah. with slack again you're like who can I assign this to oh no one because they're, 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 they're gone they're, they're no gone. longer here I have how do I even log into LastPass <laughs> <laughs> to get access to all this stuff yeah. I don't know <laughs> Somebody text me and tell me. <laughs> Still locked out. I hate that long password. What do um, they call it? The what? The, 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 like the master password? Oh, yes. The master password. Oh. I have to call my husband regularly and be like, what is it again? What is that thing? <laughs> I keep resetting and then like not sharing with everyone what the new password is. So I'm just continuously resetting. Just so you know. Don't ask me for my Netflix or my Hulu. <laughs> Because she don't know the best. She couldn't help you if she wanted right. to. Sorry. Um, <laughs> All right. So let's talk about some of the highs, though. Let's talk about some of the actual oh fun yes. that we had. Yes. Because while we did burn down businesses <laughs> and say goodbye to yeah. millions of dollars in revenue, <laughs> like complete idiots. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> we also had fun. <laughs> we also had fun. And we did amazing things in the midst of. That's the other thing is like things can be really hard. Mm -hmm. And it's scary as hell. And you can do some of some epic things in the midst of yes, all that. Yes, and so, have some of your best work being out in the world when I, you also are dealing with very challenging times. Yeah. Yes. Because, like, in the midst of, like, saying goodbye to your company, you were filming a TV show. Yeah. Wow. Which is... Amazing. But, like, but you're so right. Because... I think I, I wrote this yesterday. I'm like, shitty and delightful can coexist. Why yes, you know? yes. do they do? They got on a t shirt. They truly, <laughs> truly, truly can. And I think you all have been so incredible and supportive of reminding me to stay in the miracle. Yeah. You know? Because there are so many moments in the middle of. Because when you're filming a TV show, y'all, what you see on TV. It's fake news. Okay? <laughs> I'm here to let you know, it's fake news. Okay? Um, and I think what's different about, and I think what I know is different about our show is that a lot of these shows that you see that are um, series shows, so maybe they have like eight to 12 episodes, they film those episodes, they film an entire season in maybe 
two to three months. You know, they find the homeowners, they completely map out every single piece of furniture, where everything is going to go. And none of those homes ever really have any structural re-engineering, mm -hmm. you know. But this show is like a complete gut. So <laughs> you're just like, yeah, another burn it down and just believe it's all going to come back together. Yes. But you all have been so helpful in reminding me like, hey, even in the midst of this thing, that feels like it's never going to end. Mm -hmm. Like, how can we find our joy? How can yes. we like keep pressing? And have fun and yeah. create art. Because I think creativity is healing and being mm -hmm. creative is is like a release, mm -hmm. right, of some of the challenges. So even though you're having challenging experiences, you also get to create beautiful things, and that's always fun as yeah. well. Yeah. So And also for context, you are doing a show <laughs> on the own network, right? Right. <laughs> so tell them about the TV show for those who may not know. Yeah, so we're filming a TV show, which is a co-pro. Yes. Little bingo, little co-production <laughs> um, between the Oprah Winfrey Network and HGTV. And it's being presented by Discovery Plus. And what's really cool about working with two different networks is you're working with two completely different creative teams that are coming together to have this collaboration. So what I love is HG has their way of how they produce shows and, and the OWN network has their way. And so it's like we get to make our own thing, which is yes. kind of like what we do with the most. Like yes. Susan has a way she runs her company. You have a way you run your company. I have a way I run my company. And then together we work on this event and kind of pull the best mm -hmm. parts of each of our companies out and make this this beautiful thing. Yes. Um, it's a co-pro. It's a co-pro. It is a co-pro. You like how I use that vocabulary? I love okay. It. <laughs> <laughs> so that has definitely, I would definitely say that has been the high. Yes. Is finally starting that filming process. Yes. Because the creative process of just building the show was almost two years mm -hmm. like we didn't begin filming until june of 2022 but we pitched the show in june 2020 yeah so it's like two years of pre-production and like and getting the show and, the and show. Not, like yeah. the whole thing yes and listen like we were saying some of the best things don't happen in 12 months yeah they don't happen in five weeks right like some of the best work you're going to put out in the world takes years yeah. mm, to years. develop and it's worth it it's yeah. worth the effort it's worth the commitment yeah. you know would you say that about writing a book as well for sure yeah. i mean i think between like you write the proposal i wrote the proposal like two plus years before the book ever came out yeah. before i even you write the proposal, then you got to get a book deal. And then you go through the whole process of like, okay, now I actually have to start writing the book. Mm -hmm. And that takes a whole, you know, at least six months, if not a year to write the book and do all the thinking and thinking through different parts and editing and re-editing. I was like, I never want to read these words ever again in my life by the time I finish. <laughs> you have to edit so many times. And you just like, I, my editing process was like, you print out the whole book. I lock myself in a hotel room and I'm like, you don't go home until this whole thing is edited. Mm -hmm. And I literally, with a pen, I'm like going through every word um, to make sure, like, cause my name's gonna be on it. And I'm like, if my name's on it, I need to stand by every word, right? And I need to make sure I feel really good about everything that I've said here. So, and sometimes like the first words that you wrote was like literally six months ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or yeah. a year ago sometimes. Yeah. So it is a long process. But yes, in 2022, one of the highlights for us is we sold 100,000 copies of my book, We Should All Be yes. Millionaires, in the first year Amazing. of its existence. So, so it turned one in May 2022. So that was awesome. So and I would say one of the other real highs was going on Susan Hyatt's Italy retreat to Lake Como in June. That was so incredibly fun. My yeah. sister came. Robert was there. We coaxed him in at the last minute. He was trying to act like he wasn't coming, but he knew he was. I don't know why he was lying. Um, <laughs> was like, yeah. I was like sleeping on a cot so he could have a bed. I mean, know. truly, she didn't have a room because of him. Yeah. <laughs> you know what, though? That's why, and I know we'll talk about it in a later episode, but that's why you need good friends, y'all. Because mm -hmm. I started to tell myself that if I'm doing hard things then my existence needs to be hard oh no you know? no 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 but like, no. But, but like that's what that that's like how i 
got rewired in the pandemic. Yeah. And realized I needed some some remapping. Because yes. I thought, okay, if I'm building this home and doing this thing and launching this new company, I can't be away from my desk. And y'all were like, no, no, it's the opposite. Like, <laughs> right. like but, you know, and I was right. like, I'm like, no, and I insist you get the hell away from your desk. Yes. This instant. Yeah, but that is the thing though. So like getting on that flight to Como, and then you saying, Robert, let's stay a couple of extra days. I'm like, more days away from sales calls? You're like, yes. <laughs> like, those days were so transformative for my joy, mm-hmm. for my team, yes. for the clients that I serve. Like, that was, that was the high. You so say right something. The lesson here is to go on a Susan Hyatt retreat. <laughs> <laughs> that is the lesson. Correct. The lesson is also, <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> The lesson is also get you an Aquarius friend with a Sagittarius moon mm-hmm. who is going to um, make you book impulsive last minute trips. I <laughs> co-sign that. <laughs> she brings people on my retreats. Yeah. I'm always like, um, we're all going, right? Let's go. Yeah. I mean, I literally, I'm good for, I'm going to need an affiliate fee actually, Susan. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I'm like, hmm, one, two, three, four. I got all these people yeah, to say yeah, yes. yeah. <laughs> I'm basically on the low. I'm Susan Hyatt salesperson for her retreats. <laughs> for real, for real. <laughs> repayment for all the Vox coaching. <laughs> Correct. I'm, I'm, I'm coach on call. Correct. All the free coaching. Like, I'm like, even why time. would I book a, a call when I can just Vox right now? All my problems. <laughs> and I'm like, let me tell you one thing. Okay? Exactly. Let, let me tell you what we're not doing today. Yes. Let, let, let me right. help you with this pep talk. Okay. Yeah. Listen, uh, but that Italy retreat, first yeah. of all, we saw beautiful, gorgeous mountains. And yeah. men. <laughs> beautiful men. gorgeous men apparently um i mean we she, you wake up one day and she's like let's go to switzerland and we're like wait what what are we doing we're getting on a train <laughs> and we're going to switzerland through the mountains that listen that actually that train ride was one of my favorite retreat moments of all time yes. because we're on this beautiful lake and then we drive to get on this red train that takes you up through the Alps. Yes. And then you end up in St. Moritz. Yes. And then you get off the train and have it literally we were screaming. 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 Looking at the, and, <laughs> and my my sister's favorite quote from that trip cuz we were all like we had shopped till we dropped like we had <laughs> eaten, we'd had a great time. And then we get on this train and we're like, "Oh, Right? And just dropping our packages and like, we need to rest and recover. Is there someone to bring me a cappuccino? Anywhere? Anyone? Um, <laughs> I mean, this scene right here. I'm trying to, scene. listen, I'm trying to take them somewhere. Listen, okay? come on, this you is got. My, this is my acting coach. Um, so anyway, so then we're sitting there, we're relaxing, and then this view, and we're like, oh my God, and I get up to go look at this view. And then they're like, there's a couple of them who are like, you're blocking the view. And I was like, get your ass up if you want to see the glacier, okay? <laughs> you see this epic glacier, get your ass up if you want to see it. You don't get to sit in your seat and see this epic glacier, Correct. okay? You gotta get up it to see the view. It was Angela who wanted Correct. to like nap and see the glacier. <laughs> Correct. Oh and she's constantly saying that to me now. She's like, this is a get your ass up moment. Get yeah. your ass up if you want to see the glacier. <laughs> It's so true. It's so true. And like that's that is a high for me as well. Yes. Because getting back to doing those retreats is what I absolutely love. It's just yeah. one part of my business. Yes. And so, you know, Italy, uh, twice, uh, Morocco. Mm-hmm. I mean, those were all big highs for me as well. Yes. I'm telling you, those Riva boats and that then this been. little add-on that we did, like Oh my god! And I had to coach myself because I just knew, even leading up to it, that I was gonna cancel on yeah. you and be like, "No, I gotta go home to my babies." Yeah. Because it's so hard as a mother to leave your small children and you feel like you're doing something wrong. And then I called home, and they were living their best life and having like great bonding time with dad and grandma mm-hmm. and tante. And I'm like, "Yo, miss me at all? Why am I stressing? Yeah. Let me go hit this um, lake in this boat." <laughs> And this yeah. pool and this club in Milan, I'm telling you, and and this is what you always say, right? Be the person with the stories. Yes. And that's, I mean, and not we have, the regrets. yes, so many amazing stories from that fun trip, which was like, what, three or four additional days. Yeah. I'm telling you, we had the time of our lives. It was so, okay. So just so y'all know, <laughs> what she's actually saying is you, we finished the majesty 
the the magic of Susan's retreat. Like, I mean, when I say you are wore out on joy mm-hmm. and luxury when you finish, you're like, yeah, you're you're like, wait, we're getting up again. Where are we going today? And she's like, get up, because I have a delightful experience for you. <laughs> and then you're like, what is it? And she's like, I'm not telling you. And then you go and you're like, I'm in a seaplane. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like the most the magical stuff. The seaplane. That was. Really I scary. loved it. And what was the pilot's name? I forgot. Oh, I don't Luca. Know. Luca. Luca. she wants to wrap this up but y'all need to hear we this still, story. we still haven't even gotten to like your favorite personal win we'll um, share that later okay. <laughs> okay, maybe y'all maybe. need to hear about this italy okay, trip. okay. <laughs> so, okay. all right just real real quick, real, real quick. Okay. so y'all come on in gather in real quick for this real quick, quick story all right so our last night in Milan. We are there, okay? <laughs> Milan. Milan. That's Milan. Um, so we're in Milan. And the two of us. <laughs> I can't. So Rachel's like, okay, we're going out to dinner. And we like put on our clothing. We're having so much fun. We're sitting at this dinner. And I see Rachel over on her phone. And she's like, I'm like, what? She's like, I want to go dancing. I'm like, no, ma'am. We have italy for 12, 13 days at this point. <laughs> it's time to go home. Okay? Right. She's like, no, no. She's like, let's go dancing. And there was just something, like, honestly, like, in your eyes that, like, as a friend, I felt like you needed that moment. <laughs> I needed that. You know, like, you need, there was, like, something there. And I was like, okay. So, y'all, we get there. Okay. And I'm going to just tell you right now. <laughs> When we, whenever we get somewhere, I think one of my gifts from above <laughs> is if there is a line, I'm going to get us to the front Let of that Let me tell line. you something, okay? If you want to be VIP and you're not really VIP, but you're trying to be VIP, be with this one. I don't know what he says. He just whispers into people's ears and doors open and lines. I mean, look boom. at his face. But, but, but. <laughs> They'd be like knocking me. Get out of the line. Get your back of the line. But it didn't work in Melon. Okay, because they literally looked at me and they were like, no. So we were in the real regular line, okay, just looking real regular and sad. And we finally... At one point, we were sitting in our finery on the sidewalk. On the cement. (laughs) On the floor. And so we finally get in. They, like, stamp us. And we get into this place. And it was the first time that I had seen so many different generations really partying together for real all different ages all different kinds of people and we dance i mean we sweated out our hair our weaves our weaves i got (laughs) mascara i mean i had eyeliner we looked wrecked when we left that (laughs) he was wrecked but i I mean i i think our clothing was soaked through with sweat it was it was i mean listen if you don't want to leave a club looking good, if you leave a club looking good, you did not have fun. You didn't okay? do it. You didn't if do you, it. the only way you know you have fun is if you look crazy. Okay, if you look <laughs> wild when you walk out the door. That's how you know you had a good time. Your hair need to be sticking right up over your head. Yeah. Okay. Do you, <laughs> mean, do you mean like my feather halter tie being <laughs> fucking sideways <laughs> after the ROI? <laughs> I'm leaving there with like you yeah. know one eyelash. <laughs> That's how you know you had a good time. Top. And I did that sober. <laughs> you sure did. You just had your amino energy in the corner. Just <laughs> Okay, Susan's going to cuss me out if I don't finish this story. <laughs> so I think what I'm getting to is when someone's looking at you, okay, and they're giving you that, it's time to go to the club. Look, go to the club. Yes. Okay? And when you go to the club, and I think one of those clubs can be the most. Okay. 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 Yes. Make okay. sure that when you leave, you look wrecked. <laughs> like, yes. Look Listen, wrecked. Whether like, you're leaving a club yes. or a year, leave it wrecked in your right. life. You know okay. What? That's how you know you had a lot of highs and lows. There you go. You leave it all on the field. You see how we wrap that right up see, for you? Yeah. But a nice bow. Actually, <laughs> yeah, we're going to hand it right back to you. See none, of, none of that is in the script we were doing. I just need to know. Better luck in the next yeah. episode. Yeah. <laughs> you Big get what ball. you get. Okay? <laughs> Big Big ball. Ball. <laughs> and with that, we're going to wrap this episode.
so. No, we're <laughs> not. No. no. Personal highs. Personal highs. Personal highs. Well, we can, Are you we sure? Listen, I think. Look at Bethany's face. We could say like one high. Like one boom, high. Bing bong. Look at Aaron. Fucking like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Personal high. Biggest personal high was um, my sister's wedding. Oh. Yeah. That was. That the, looked epic. That was the biggest personal high. Um, it was seeing all of my family together. And I, I do believe it is the happiest day I've ever experienced on earth. Wow. I, I love it. And wow. I have had some beautiful days in my life, but seeing my sister just full of joy mm-hmm. and just being beautiful her and yes. seeing so many people celebrate her because I think mm-hmm. like us, like when you are the performer, so much attention gets put on you. It's true. And to see her be the star and mm-hmm. to see people love and celebrate on her and not like be asking about Robert. No, give the light to somebody else. Yes. You know what I mean? And to see her be able to receive it that was like my personal that's amazing and let's be clear she married a nigerian man so it was a good time baby (laughs) good with a t on it at the end good good okay (laughs) i actually told her i said listen i was like after that ceremony i realized my new life calling don't do this i mean i'm I'm keeping this cultural Boom, and here we culture. are. Yes. <laughs> I told her, I was like, I want to be my my new goal in life, my greatest <laughs> aspiration, as Beyonce would say, is I want to be one of the colonat women. Okay, so they have these colonat trays and they like do this little shuffle dance and they have their hats and their fabrics. I need hats, I need fabrics, and I need colonats. That's my, uh, <laughs> that's my greatest aspiration. Personal high. Personal high. There were so many, but I think um, probably I would say the best thing that I experienced in 2022 was going to St. Lucia for my 40th birthday with my husband. Mm -hmm. We had a fabulous time. I mean, we did literally all of the things. Mm -hmm. We went on every tour. We had bike rides. We were on farms. (laughs) We were everywhere. Um, Had fabulous dinners. We had like deep conversations and it was very like therapeutic and healing and fun um and we felt so we stayed at jade mountain in saint lucia fabulous okay fabulous stunning views just like epic so i think that was my biggest personal highlight oh, <laughs> oh so now she likes this section okay. also i had so many okay i don't know if y'all know i'm now a reverend so <laughs> Reverend Susan Hyatt married a client on a mountaintop in Alaska. That was that was a runner up. But the real high was uh, seeing my daughter Cora Hyatt, a December graduate. So there was no ceremony, but I got to see her present her senior thesis, mm. which was about a feminist topic. And flying to Portland to see her do her thing and graduate with you know honors double major it was like wow yeah like she is really doing it amazing and she's now living in brooklyn and she's our favorite netflix special at the moment (laughs) her love life home for the holidays home yes that's what we're calling it (laughs) it's a netflix special special. i love it well here's the thing y'all we're ready to see you in la okay because this magic over here is what we're going to be doing at the most this year yes and i think that what we are excited to create in la this year is a space for your highs and a space for your lows Mm -hmm. um because they can coexist and i I couldn't think of a better group of folks for it to coexist with exactly and it's all about building your personal brand right what is the creative work you want to bring in the world what are the challenges you want to overcome um, and who are the people that you need to help you bring that work into the world? So that's who we will be assembling in LA, and you need to be there. So quit stalling, get off the fence, <laughs> sign up, click below. Okay, <laughs> you are the most. <laughs> <laughs>